Okay. Um, hello and welcome again, everyone. Uh, my name is Ahmed, and today I'll be presenting um, Team Australia's solution to the SOSA characterizer problem. So, to redefine the problem, uh, our goal is to measure the irradiance and the color temperature of a light source using solar cell material. Um, and in doing so, we have to try and find the accuracies and the limitations of the system, as well as identify the relevant parameters which affect our measurements. So, uh, in this case, our team took a highly conceptual and theoretical approach to the problem to try and uh, essentially find a way of uh, estimating these parameters using just a very simple setup. So, I'm going to walk through that slowly. So, to begin with, we've got some definitions here. So, irradiance is defined as the power density at a certain point on the surface of some solar cell. So, in that case, it is defined as the rate, as the rate of change of the power flow with respect to area. Um, the power itself can be written in terms of the luminous, uh, lumen, uh, luminescence, L, uh, as this integral expression. So, an integral over uh, the solid angle as well as the area. Uh, which is also equal to the rate of change of the energy, uh, the incident energy with respect to time. So L here is uh, essentially the radiance, which is a measure of uh, power per unit area per solid angle. So in this case, what we also have, we've got the definition of Planck's law, which is uh, which gives us the black body uh, essentially curve as a function of frequency, the amount of power per unit frequency, perhaps. Uh, the definition of color temperature itself is essentially just the temperature of an ideal black body which radiates light similar to that of the light source which we are investigating. So its calculation, uh, if you go into the XY chromaticity space, uh, you can simply uh, estimate it on the Planckian locus given in this image here. So moving on, uh, how does a solar cell work? Basically what we've got is the photovoltaic effect and the generation of electron and hole uh, pairs in NMP type materials due to photon absorption, which leads to a potential difference. Um, so one of the important properties of uh, such setups are obviously the inefficiencies caused by the band gaps and thermalization losses. Um, so our setup is essentially just a very simple setup. We've just got a solar cell with some incident radiation connected to some very basic resistive load. So what we are going to do is we're going to assume that the radiation is perpendicular to the cell surface uh, and it is uniform and it is close to that of a black body uh, curve, in which case it has, uh, it is a very good uh, gray body in a sense. Uh, what we also have is that the solar cell obviously has a, a, an effective constant surface area A. Okay, so what we have here is the expression for the power input to our, uh, on the surface of our solar cell. Uh, assuming that the radiation is perpendicular to the surface, we can integrate out the solid angle. Uh, as well as that, uh, writing this as a function of frequency, uh, we can replace L in terms of B, which is the Planck distribution. Uh, once we do that, we can integrate over all frequencies to find the total power input uh, given by all of the photons. Um, again, <coughs> substituting that in, integrating the area out, we get something like this. Um, which then gives us a measure of irradiance in terms of the Planck distribution. Uh, on the other hand, what we can do is go to the output, uh, essentially define the power output per unit frequency again uh, as this expression where we've got uh, eta within the integral is just the efficiency as a function of frequency of the photons incident. So again, we're going to do the calculation, plug it into the integrals, and we find that the power output is simply equal to the integral of the efficiency times the Planck distribution um, integrated over all frequencies. We also know that the power output can simply be measured by Ohm's law. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try and find uh, an expression for the efficiency of our system. So if we have an efficiency for our solar cell, we can essentially use this to characterize a black body curve, which is incident on our solar cell. So, from the literature, we know that the efficiency is given by an expression of some sort like this. So what can we do to make this expression simpler? It looks awfully complicated. So to explain each of these terms uh, in, these ex in this expression, we're going to have to identify what each of the parameters are and how they relate to the problem. So the first two terms uh, in this expression here 
are known as the ultimate efficiency of these of the solar cell. So what we have is, uh, what we can do is we can um, deduce that uh, long wavelength, uh, high frequency photons are not all going to be absorbed uh, because there's going to be some thermalization losses uh, and also short, uh, um, sorry, um, very low frequency wavelengths are also not going to be absorbed because they do not have enough energy to reach the band gap. So we have two types of losses uh, and so essentially estimating these over certain wavelength ranges, we find that the ultimate efficiency of the cell depended on the, uh, depending on the gap, uh, band gap energy is given by this expression here. So moving on, uh, again defining two more terms, the external quantum efficiency, quantum efficiency and the internal quantum efficiency are given by the ratio of the number of collected electron hole pairs and the number of incident photons, as well as the number of photons that are absorbed by the cell material itself. Uh, and so um, the losses incurred between the external quantum efficiency and the internal quantum efficiency are due to reflection times uh, coming from uh, reflections from off of the surfaces, um, as well as uh, photons being absorbed in parts of the material which are uh, which is essentially not the absorber material. So, for example, being absorbed in the glass or some other parts of the of the system. Uh, there's also an extra term here, which uh, includes the effect of a photon generating multiple electron hole pairs, which is a, poten uh, which is a possibility. Uh, as well as that, we've got uh, the electrical quantum efficiency, which is essentially just a measure of uh, the probability that a, gener uh, that a generator carrier is collected uh, in the system. So using these expressions, we find that the external quantum efficiency is given by something like this which is equal to all of the reflections multiplied by all of the photons that got absorbed into the, the probability of all the photons being absorbed into the uh, semiconductor, as well as the ones that are collected. There's also some losses incurred due to having uh, a metal conductor on top of our solar cell, um, which is called a shading loss. Uh, and lastly, we've got two terms, which are the band gap utilization efficiency as well as the fill factor, which is the ratio of the maximum power uh, output and this, uh, of the cell, as well as the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. So all of these parameters together give us a model for our efficiency. So what we can do then is going back to the integral expressions we have for the efficiency. We have the number of, uh, essentially the photon flux, which is given as a rate of change of the number of photons divided by the, or per area. Uh, and we can essentially estimate this um, to find that the photon flux is given by an expression of that form, which is very similar to the Planck distribution itself. Uh, again, substituting the flux uh, expression into the equation for the external efficiency, plugging everything in, we find an expression uh, for the efficiency of the system. Now, what we note here is that these two integrals here, because they are definite integrals, they're just numbers, so they can be absorbed into that constant there, so what we have is that our efficiency has a functional form which is equal to lambda to the form multiplied by this factor here. So um, again, this proposed experimental setup is something very simple. What we're going to do is again, um, characterize the efficiency, since we know it's functional form, characterize it using a known black body spectrum. So this can be done using uh, spectrometers and visible filters. Um, as at certain specified frequencies. Uh, and by choosing our filters uh, in a specified way, we can estimate this integral and therefore calculate what the efficiency should be provided what this uh, power here is. So doing that, what we can do is then uh, get a characterization for the efficiency of our cell uh, and from there work backwards. Every time we plug in uh, some new black body, instead of working uh, in this manner, where we have a known black body calculating the efficiency, we go from the efficiency to calculating the black body spectrum. So, this uh, essentially this proposal uh, has very carefully um, gone through all of the theoretical uh, parts of the system, uh, identified all of the parameters that are going to affect uh, the efficiency of the system, uh, and it can lead to a calculation for the color temperature and irradiance. Uh, the failures of the model, unfortunately, are things like uh, 
difficult analytic expressions as well as uh, numerical errors in the calculations. That's all. Thank you. So, good lunchtime, everyone. Uh, my name is Anke Trin. I'm representing the Swedish team, and I'm going to pose on problem number 14, the solar cell characterizer. So, for the task, um, the uh, task said that we should implement, propose and implement a method to measure the irradiance and the color temperature of different light sources uh, using solar cell materials and focus on the limits and accuracy of the proposed measurement method. And what we've seen in the report were the, the cover the very basics of solar cell physics and a theoretical expectation on the efficiency. So, um, for the presentation, it had some theory um, presented with some basic explanations which were kind of good to understand, but the problem is um, it, the presentation was simply loaded with text and equations which made it very hard to like actually get where the focus in this presentation is or to get any clue on how this could be measured. So it, with no slide numbers, it was in the presentation it was kind of a hard and a clarifying questions to refer back to some of uh, the mentioned uh, theory. Uh, for the experiment, the good part was there was something proposed, but the bad part was that we actually, that actually the task was not fulfilled in terms of that we didn't see any implementation of this proposed method. Um, also, of course, with that comes that there was not any discussion uh, on the accuracy or no discussion of like what parameters might be relevant for it. For both, like all this, like, were there any limitations, and what what kind of uh, light sources can I actually characterize with this, or what are the limits, or how accurate can I get here? So, um, basically, this presentation was very much focused on theory, and so there was not much on the experiments to comment on from that perspective. Uh, for the theory, and um, we agree that this was a very exten extensive model for the efficiency which takes a lot of parameters in. So for example, the efficiency, uh, the quantum uh, efficiency of the solar cells at different wavelengths. And we agree on that part that it might be a possible method to actually measure the, um, the irradiance as well as the color temperature. But what we missed in the theory was um, very basic explanations about actually why we can, why we can convert uh, light like solar energy to electric energy. So a little bit discussion on the gap structure in semiconductors would have been great, which also leads, I will come to that in the discussion, to the direct limits of these experiments. Also, um, for the color temperature, we did see a definition, but from the uh, theoretical um, explanation, it was not, we could not see how this could be measured in the experiment itself. And for the Speaking from theory, there was just too much focus, too much theoretical focus on the solar cell efficiency, which is of course a parameter I can take out of a solar cell measurement, but there's just very much more. And I mean, taking from the fact that this was a very um, literature focused presentation, uh, a little citation of literature would have been known because this is simply, well, this, I mean, this, the physics presented wasn't new, that's just the basic literature knowledge on on solar cells. For, so, uh, for the discussion, I want to take the discussion a little bit into the direction and um, how could we implement that setup and maybe come to some <coughs> conclusions on what actually are the limits you uh, mentioned in your presentation. Um, with a focus on actually what light sources can I measure with that. So, um, I want to discuss with you later, well, actually what contributions in uh, um, in the light spectrum, can we actually see in uh, in the power we get out of the solar cell? And of course, we want to um, at the end. I would like to come to some conclusions and what what can we what can we measure? So um, I'd like to invite the okay. to okay. join. Sure. Yep. Um, so um, my first question would be because it wasn't clearly answered in the clarifying questions. Yes. If I have a solar spectrum, which yeah. is like a black body, like this, mm -hmm. not, yeah, let's that be a black body. Okay. Which part, 
if this is the wavelength, to which part actually does, does the spectrum contribute to what I measure in the cell? So, is there some cutoff? Yes. So, um, I'm not sure if you noticed when I was talking about the ultimate efficiency of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the cell. So, what we've got is uh, if we have some solar cell and we input some black body spectrum into it, uh, because of uh, essentially band gap thermalization, there's going to be a lower cutoff here, right? Where all of this energy is not going to be turned into useful energy uh, since its wavelength is too low. And there's also going to be a higher cutoff here where none of these waves are going to be absorbed into our material, right? So there's two clear cutoffs here, which I mentioned. Um, they, for most solar cells, for most silicon solar cells, they do occur around the edges of the visible spectrum. Okay, uh, just, yeah. just um, I agree. Um, if this is like increasing wavelength, I would put the band gap here because just, I mean. That's probably labeled incorrectly, yes. Because, I mean, oh, like wavelengths over the band gap, well, they yeah. won't contribute to the solar cell, which yeah, is yeah, kind yeah. of obvious. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, for yeah, here, yeah, yeah. do you think that this that this is just purely because of, well, the mm -hmm. quantum efficiency in like con yeah. conversion in a okay, so or is yeah. it due to the, is it due to the sheet of glass which is often placed on solar okay, cells? Okay, no, so this is, if I've got a, uh, essentially a very high energetic photon, it's going to, uh, let's say, be absorbed by the material, it's going to create electron and hole pairs with excess energy, that kinetic energy is going to be thermalized and lost. Okay, in the so uh, so you agree on, on here that this is actually just due to the silicon and not due on the glass which is placed on. Yes. Okay, so I disagree on that part, but maybe uh, maybe uh, let's move to let's move on. Okay. So um, let's say if I have two different light sources, so let's say an LED and a common light bulb, which have yes. different uh, different color temperatures. Yes. Could I could yeah. so just to clarify, could mm -hmm. I determine how how can I determine the color temperature mm -hmm. if I don't know the power yeah. of these two sources? Just okay. the color. If so, I want okay, to yeah. measure so the color, going, how go, how yeah, yeah. how was this actually proposed in your presentation? So the very last expression I had was something like this, uh, and the f where I've got eta as a function of lambda, where this is my efficiency. Uh, and this is my black body spectrum as a function of lambda. Okay, okay? but I mean, but do you yeah. have theoretical values in how actually this measured efficiency like differs? So I mean, could you see something if you like just use very common material? I mean, of course there might be differences in this uh, calculation, but mm -hmm. are the are the differences large enough yeah. so I could actually use it? Yeah. Okay. So so perhaps clarifying this might actually help a little bit. So. What our proposed setup was that if you use a filter uh, between these two certain wavelengths or frequencies, you can change it. Uh, and let's say, for the sake of argument, assume this is constant over that small filter wavelength or uh, range. Ah, okay. Can ah, okay. So just to clarify, just, uh, yeah. may, may get, may, so you propose that you basically um, cut your spectrum into yes. like different and then measure the contribution to yes. to each. Okay. Yes. Okay. On, on that part, I agree that this that this might work out. Yeah. But now Perhaps I wasn't too clear on that in the presentation. So yeah, okay, okay, but yeah. thank you for clarifying. Now. Okay, now, now it's clear what I, what I mean about that. But maybe then come back to the um, irradiance. Yeah. Do you assume in your presentation that you don't know your exact solar cell parameters, or do you uh, expect that you know everything about your solar cell and so you can just so calculate? In, in that case, apart from um, physical parameters that we can measure about it, so for example, let's say its thickness, its surface area, Apart from that, uh, we are essentially assuming that we know nothing about it and that any incident radiation is going to result in some kind of output power, which then is determined by this, uh, which is the efficiency and what we measure on the output, if that makes sense. Okay. But don't, I mean, do you calibrate your setup then first? To yes, actually know like what is yeah, a yeah, known yeah. source? Yes, oh, what was so, the, yeah, that, that, that is what I said at the end of the presentation. So we use a known black body, uh, which we can, uh, you know, we can use a lamp of a known black body spectrum. We can measure that. Okay. We yeah. can plug this into okay. the Okay. Hello, everyone. It's me again. <laughs> I'm Dan Minardi from Politecnico Milano. Uh, first of all, let's read again the, the problem. So, propose and implement a method to determine the irradiance and color temperature of light source by using solar cell materials 
and how accurately can they be measured, what are the limitations of your method, and what are the re relevant parameters. So, the pros of the reporter's uh, speech is that they did a good recap of the theory well known, and also give, gave a good explanation of uh, how it could be done a, an experimental setup and uh, why we can do some things, for example, why to measure the VOC. But uh, I think uh, in the presentations, the main problem is that uh, we have a lot of theory, but no experimental evidence of that works. And uh, it some way is a bit difficult, it was a bit difficult to follow the presentation because there were a lot of formulas and sometimes is a bit dispersive because and then I think that another problem is that also the limitations of the experimental setup and uh, weren't analyzed also because it uh, isn't presented a possible step. Then the opponent uh, made a brief summary of uh, the reporter's presentation and, uh, uh, and gives some topics uh, to discuss on, such uh, as uh, so the, the debate on how some materials works uh, and uh, the contribution was of various power lengths to the power spectrum and uh, to discuss how to implement uh, practically a real setup uh, to do the <coughs> what the problem has to do. So now we were speaking about uh, the possible experimental setup uh, and but I want you to discuss uh, some other topics. For example, is the VOC a good parameter to estimate the power of the, of the source? So can we measure other parameters uh, of the solar cell to, to say, OK, this is the power? And uh, is there any alternative solution to measure the power, uh, maybe knowing rebuilding the spectrum the and the then okay. measuring the power? Yeah, so just going to this point here, okay. uh, when you're mentioning about us measuring VOC, nowhere in my presentation did I say that we were using VOC as any measurement. It was simply in the definition of one of the terms appearing in the efficiency. Okay. And uh, at some point in my slides, um, I did mention that that factor is essentially a constant, um, which is just going to be a proportionality constant in the efficiency. So there's no direct, uh, there's no required direct measurement of the open circuit current. Or okay, voltage. so what would you like to measure in a real experiment? Okay, so in our experiments, what we're going to do is we're going to have a light source shining perpendicularly on top of a solar yes. cell. What we measure is just the amount of power coming out of it. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, plug in filters in between okay. The, uh, in between the, the light and source the and, and the thing, yes. Okay. Uh, and so by essentially coming up with bands of wavelengths by filtering it, okay. we're going to find the amount of power output um, yes. as a function of, or, or for, for that wavelength. particular band. Okay. Yes. So do you agree? Uh, no, I do not agree. Um, I may, I'd like to comment on the open circuit uh, voltage is a good parameter or not. And okay. I disagree here that it is a good parameter because it's, uh, it's uh, in the major drives. We have a logarithmic dependence of, uh, this is like literature knowledge, the dependence of the uh, open circuit voltage um, to the uh, irradiance. It's, it, well, it looks something like this, approaching okay. a kind of For real says. So I disagree that this is a good parameter. I would, it, uh, I would uh, propose with, with measuring like certain parameters of, of a solar cell, I would propose a, a short circuit current okay. if the source is calibrated well, because this has a linear dependence, so it just makes everything easier. Okay. If you are in a certain range of like the solar cell, yeah. and it's yeah. where it was optimized for. So, uh, so you think that uh, the short circuit current is a better parameter to measure? <coughs> to 
I mean, it's, it's more a combination okay. of, of both, but, but I would definitely not agree that just the open okay. technology is so good. So, uh, can you, yeah. do you have some other, well, if uh, we measure only the output power, as you said, we only expect this, this uh, uh, portion of the spectrum. So, mm -hmm. if we have a, a very uh, cold light source, it has a peak out of the region uh, where our uh, solar cell works well. So, do you have any, any idea on how to do that? So, I mean, as a to estimate the power, okay. Some black body would yes. So, okay. how do you estimate the power of uh, this source? So, with this one, because the efficiency of our solar cell is okay. essentially not really high in that particular wavelength okay. range, yes. it's not going to work well for that. And so if you see uh, something like this, this is obviously a light source which is shining in the infrared, right? And for light sources like that, color temperature technically isn't defined, you know? Okay. Uh, may um, I that? Yes. Um, I agree to that. I, I, I disagree. I'd say it doesn't work at all to like just measure, measure some parameters with a completely unknown light sources. Um, I agree on that part that if we have, if we work with exactly one type of uh, light source, so let's say a light source which does not vary a lot in the color spec in the in the spectrum, then we can calibrate it once, and then we can measure uh, the the uh, you can use the power output as a measurement, because I mean, just using different light sources doesn't work because as as the re reviewer pointed out correctly, we might have just a huge contribution which adds a lot to the total power yeah. in the infrared. So this is like not possible at all to. to so yeah, okay. again, yeah, going so going back to uh, essentially our proposed setup, what we were going to do is knowing the black body of some kind of source, uh, which okay. you know some known source, putting this into this integral and measuring the output power. We can calculate this as a series of step functions for certain filters. So let's say that this is my black body spectrum. Okay. I'm going to break it down into n filters here. And what I do is then measure the efficiency curve. And it's going to be essentially a series of step functions. I'm going to assume it's constant over these ranges. So it's going to be a series of step functions. And once I have these step functions, if I input some unknown black body back into this expression, I should be able to solve for it, assuming this is a constant. Just, just one minute, comment on that. Or do you agree that every that this this light source is a black body, like just a spectrum? I mean, did you? No, measure I mean not quite. Not but but is yes. it how close <laughs> is it to a black body? Could you like maybe? So okay, I mean, I mean, it, it's a okay. So in that case, it's going to be with um, the difference is going to be given with some measure of emissivity, which again I mentioned was a failure of my model. Is that? Um, at the very end of my slides, I did say that we are assuming that we have really nice black bodies, which is not necessarily the case. So okay, it's going uh, to be a little bit different. We have a question. Yes. Do you agree? I agree with you, like, or maybe you can decide that the light bulb that we can have a light body, something like that. Yeah. Or LED light. Okay. Well, in, in that case. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. The process of emission is different. Mm -hmm. The spectrum is different. It's not very good. Yeah. So uh, in, in this analysis, we essentially uh, tried to look at, again, it was one of the, my first main assumptions, is that I said that we're assuming that the uh, light sources we're measuring are close to black bodies. And if you really think about that, those are technically the only light sources where color temperature actually has a meaning, right? They have to be close to the Planckian locus in the color space. Okay. If I have a red yeah. LED, and it's not going to be close. Might I comment on that um, the, the uh, color temperature, which is often written on like light bulbs and stuff, it actually yes. corresponds to what our human eyes can see. So our human eyes is not uh, not uh, not equally sensitive to all of the light colors. It actually has like three main sensors in our eyes, which like one for short length and like some for longer wavelengths. And okay. this is like affects the, how we see it. it. Of course, the the spectrum like looks like how the spectrum looks, but this is not what our eyes recognize. So this the color temperature, what is I think stated in the task, refers to what we actually calculate from the spectrum. What we see as the color temperature marked <coughs> on like a bulb. Okay, I think okay, yeah. that's, I mean, mm. okay, question. another question. Um, I saw that the opponent underlined uh, the problem of the accuracy and other, rele uh, other, rele uh, sorry, other relevant uh, para parameters apart from uh, uh, possibly the DOC. So I'd like you both to talk about uh, 
what the accuracy, accuracy and other relevant parameters? I mean, there is literature existing, it's like one of the first Google hits if you search for in uh, characterization of indoor light sources, like some recent ones which basically state, well, of course, there might be minor differences, but practically we don't see any difference. This is what I believe is also a reasonable statement because, I mean, if you look at the <coughs> definition of efficiency, uh, if you look just at the def of the efficiency what, uh, for what sources are made, they're all between, I don't know, 15 to 20 percent or something. I mean, they don't vary that much. So I don't think that, I, I don't think that we uh, would reach the accuracy proposing that method. Um, so are you saying that uh, the efficiency is uh, 15 to 20 percent constant as a function of wavelength, or does that change? Or is that an average? No, uh, the, uh, the solar cells are like optimized for the solar spectrum, yes. and then they'll deliver that uh, efficiency. But in like all the proposed, uh, but in all the literature dealing with indoor light sources, it is like it is clearly marked that of course the efficiency drops because the solar cell is not optimized for that. But in yes. that range, it doesn't vary a lot. So in def mm -hmm. therefore, I would propose, as I told you, the discussion okay. other parameters. I want to make you a suggestion. If we can. We can r reveal this, the full spectrum of a black body, so like this, uh, mm -hmm. using some features over there. Mm -hmm. Can we estimate the power of the black uh, of emitted by the black bo body, knowing the the function? Yeah, if you assume that it's a block okay. black body, it yeah. might be reasonable, but as like a lot of the sources are not very close to that, I yeah. disagree on that. So again, yeah, with, with this one, all you need is just a couple of points. So in your solution, you need some uh, filters in order to select only uh, a part of the of the black body. Uh, <coughs> yes. Uh, can you imagine another solution without it? Without filters? Yeah. Okay. So initially, what we were thinking is we wanted to estimate this function continuously and not essentially treat it as, uh, as discrete functions. So. Another alternative to that would be to try and set up uh, essentially n of these equations. So use uh, multiple different black bodies depending on how many unknown terms there are in this function. And so you get uh, n integral equations, which then you should be able to solve. No, but I mean to get the temperature of the black body. To get the temperature of the black body. Uh, like as in with that. Sorry? Imagine that eta, eta is not. Imagining eta is not. Okay, so if eta is known, what we're going to do is again just plugging this, um, essentially putting in some um, unknown black body, measuring the output power, um, filtering okay. the light source. What we can get is the output power. Yeah. Um, I would. Another method would be just using different uh, semiconductors or one of these layered solar cells. Uh, and as you said, if eta is known, we can just see, okay, which of these layers uh, delivers most of the con contribution to that. And assuming it's a nice black body, we could get the color temperature. Okay, any more questions from the jury? Yes, um, in the question, it is specifically asked about irradiance. Yes. I have a question for the opponent yes. and the reviewer. Can you define irradiance? Uh, for me? Yes. Yes. For me. I mean, yes. irradiance. Uh, irradiance is basically. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I guess I. Uh, if you can define can you it to. No, no. We please define it easily uh, in simple. It's in simple uh, formula. Formula is not too complicated, right? Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the like. Uh, it, uh, which are we, t are we talking about? The irradiance. I mean, is it it's the, the flux. I mean, it's it's uh, the irradiance. Uh, it's the flux per per area. I mean, the, the, the is it the area of the body that receives the light or that emits the light? No, the one uh, when we receive it. Yeah. But of course, from that we can calculate back to. I think it's the meter, and it is per wavelength. So. It's a density, it's not a... Okay, any more? If no more questions, then... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, Mark? Uh, uh, um. Perhaps one little yeah. from me. Uh, yeah. uh, what's uh, the definitive uh, list of literature used for the presentation? 
Okay, so that was actually something that was pointed out. Uh, I did have an extra slide after my thank you slide, which was a list of references. My bad. We probably plug that back in. And and while you're plugging it, we can listen to another question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, do we have time? Oh, yeah. Um, did you try to, you say you can just fit it, uh, um, clone distribution. Did you yes. try it? Um, since we had no experimental data, no. Well, you can put it a black body spectrum simulated. As in just like a simulation? Yeah. Uh, again, this was more of a time issue, which um, we okay. unfortunately didn't have time to do it beforehand, but yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I can, uh, okay, that's to use. <laughs> the presentation. So the that's slide that's literature. Okay. Is it okay? Okay, one more short question. More short question. Um, the reviewer, you say that the uh, presentation of the theory was good. Okay. And it ends up on that equation. Right. Sorry? Uh, and the theory ends up on that equation ever. Okay, I... Uh, you say the theory presentation was good. Can you give us something that the presentation gives us more than this equation? More than? Than this equation. What does all that presentation okay. give you as an information for building a black body uh, color method? Okay, they... What I wanted to say is that they did the, a... A, a, an analysis of uh, the phenomenon of the black body, but it, they didn't propose a real uh, setup based uh, on their theory. Okay. That answers my question. Okay, let's finish with the questions. Let's applaud the participants for their work.